Hey gun. Uh, Clay asked me to share an analogy that I had um, shared with him, um, which I sort of have come up with, I guess, just through experience and life and whatnot. Um, I don't know if it's a hundred percent accurate, um, but it might be something that someone might uh, find helps them understand how why other people do what they do and maybe understand why they do what they do so the analogy is um comparing blokes especially young blokes to kind of how dogs act and for those of you who are dog people it'll probably make sense to you um so what i've noticed is and if you've got dogs you'll have noticed this too a dog on a chain will be very aggressive and you know it only has a a small area um, that it's got to protect so it, it it doesn't want to give up anything so it'll act very aggressive and vicious and barking and snarling and everything or a dog in a yard as well especially a small yard you know it'll be running the fence line barking and snarling and everything that comes near because it's only got a small territory it can't afford to lose any but you take that same dog out into a wide open space that's neutral ground it'll be a relaxed dog sniffing other dogs asses and you know there's plenty of plenty of territory to go around so there's no need to be so protective of it and so the analogy is you know younger blokes they have a, a fragile ego and so they're very quick to fight because they feel like they've got to protect their ego and prove something to someone and um, as you get older you become more secure and more sort of confident in yourself and you're a bit slower to anger and a bit slower to fight well some people and um, the other thing that I noticed is the best fighting dogs that I've ever seen or, or, you know, that have been bred tend to be the most placid, relaxed, best house dogs, best family dogs because they're very sure of themselves. They don't view, you know, other dogs and cats and children as a threat and they really don't care because they know what they're capable of. And, um, and I've sort of noticed that in people too. And uh, even in my line of work, I have ample opportunity if I wanted to vent my spleen on people. Um, and a lot of people I work with will sort of comment how long I'll let someone go and how much I'll let them stay before it finally comes time to fold them. And the reason for that is because I know how that's going to end. And um, in my life, the toughest, hardest, you know, just dead set fucking stone cold killers that I've met they're probably the most laid back placid people uh, you'd ever see it takes an awful lot to really raise their ire because they know that you know when it's time to go they know what the end result is going to be and I guess you get to the point where you've got to weigh it up like if you're really going to fight with someone you're probably going to jail so it's got to be worth it so anyhow that's something for you all to mull on and consider and for the younger blokes who you know, feel like they've got a lot to prove or protect and maybe realise that you don't, no one actually gives a shit, so just calm down and, you know, look out for that quiet old fella sitting in the corner because he's the one who will cut loose and take care of everything.